In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has swept the globe with its unprecedented influence. In this global war, not only are we fighting against the virus, but also its co-evolving infodemic. According to WHO, infodemic is an overabundance of information, including false or misleading information in digital and physical environments during a disease outbreak. Infodemics can induce confusion led by false information, emotional burden like anxiety and depression, mistrust of the governments or health authorities, which can undermine public health responses like vaccine hesitancy, and stigma and mass discrimination led by false accusations. This can all intensify and lengthen COVID outbreak. In the information age, infodemic gets even more serious. Under digitalization, the global access to mobile phone with internet connection increases. The social media user base is also expanding accordingly. This leads to the exponential production and sharing of information. Within 30 days, 361 million YouTube videos were uploaded under COVID-19 classification. Around 515 million tweets, including COVID-related key terms, were posted. These inevitably harmful messages were amplified. In China, the situation is not less serious. By January 2020, 95% of the population owned a smartphone. 70.4% had access to internet and social media. With its increasingly large internet penetration and the limited health literacy of the offline population in some regions, China is one of the countries with most misinformation identified, only ranking behind the United States and India. There are several factors linked to infodemics, including the lack of quality control of contents online, the low public awareness to identify or clarify fake news, the limited health literacy to understand the correct information provided. So, how can we solve it? So this is our solution, confidence. It's an app that will first launch in China. It aims at providing the most accurate, direct, and easily accessible information to the users by receiving their reports about suspicious COVID fake news. And we build this app based on a model of four pillars of infodermic management. And the first layer is fact check. First, to increase the incentive of engagement, users could gain credits when reporting fake news. They could exchange for gifts or coupons using them. Second, to minimize the resistance for engagement, we will connect with social media apps to receive reports, using OCR and auto-translation method to identify the reports and information received. What are the credits for? Users can exchange their credits for four types of gifts, with the top one being an extraordinary volunteering experience. Users can also exchange it for shopping coupons, memberships, and daily necessities. How do you gain credits? This is a table summarizing our proposed way of getting credits. You receive extra credits when you successfully identify effect news or when being elected in our weekly reports. The second pillar is info values. We collect information and reports in three ways. Firstly, users are welcome to send us reports in unlimited formats. With massive public involvement, we will gather the most concerned information and increase their awareness regarding the credibility of the information. Our third way of receiving information is through connecting with various channels and social media platforms. Regarding the tech deficient area, we will recruit volunteers worldwide for hotline service, providing emotional comfort and understanding their source of anxiety. Volunteers could also participate in field visits, collecting rumors and myths about COVID in local regions, and report their concerns to us. By this, we could satisfy the needs for both urban and rural areas. To ensure the first pillar, accurate translation of information, we will cooperate with academia for data analysis and involve professional teams and offer student internship program experience to students. The Journal of Public will report suspicious news and information they received to student interns who assist in data shorting and writing response in layman terms. They are checked and present by the professors. Why only professors and students are involved? This is mainly due to three major reasons. Firstly, to ensure the accuracy of information. Secondly, to encourage the public to actively refer to professional ideas instead of other unsatisfied sources. Thirdly, as professors and students, the academically independent 
Therefore, they will not be politically affiliated and they are very neutral. The final color is e-health literacy. We will publish a weekly review reports summarizing top Q&As on recent fake news and misconceptions, as well as providing some health tips. As for the challenges, the first challenge is the backfire effect. Some may worry that our app will induce further rumors after explanation. Plus, forums and threads can be created under our post so that users are encouraged to ask further questions. Their questions and queries will be answered by credited professionals later to ensure that only accurate information is spread. Moreover, artificial intelligence will also be introduced so that only layman terms and common examples are provided in our explanation to ensure layman friendliness. Lastly, infographics will also be made and disseminated in social media to educate the public. The second challenge is the manpower to support our operation of the app. It is of a challenge for us to recruit professionals to assist our app development due to the limitation of budget. As a result, we propose that we can recruit volunteers such as medical students and research interns to assist our app development. A certificate will be issued for them to recognize and acknowledge their effort in the hope of attracting them to help us develop our app. The third challenge is the budget limit when creating an app. We plan to find sponsorships for rewards so that we can even earn promotion fee for supporting the development of the app. Student helpers also play a large part in our cost reduction. As for our budget plan, the cost is divided into three proportions and app development consists of the largest proportion. The money will mainly be used to recruit computer science student helpers to write our program. A sum of money is also allocated for the launching of app on both App Store and Google Play Store and the continued maintenance and improvement of app. The second category is the promotion fee. We are going to promote our app on two platforms, Weibo and WeChat, with the help of key opinion leaders, KOLs. Lastly, the remaining amount of money will be allocated to purchase rewards. We will continue to look for sponsorships of related companies so that our financial burden can be relieved. To facilitate the execution of our plan, we have created a timeline consisting of four stages. In the first stage, we will spend six months developing the app. We will collaborate with local universities to invite students majoring in computer science to help us develop the app as well as recruit medical students to answer users' questions using their professional knowledge. To ensure the quality of our app, we will invite professors to do regular checks. In addition, we will also collaborate with companies that sell health products to see if they can provide gifts for a reward system as a way to promote their products. In our second stage, we will launch a pilot scheme lasting for two to three months in a more developed region like Shenzhen and a less developed region like Guizhou. We will obtain feedback from our users and make some improvements. At the meantime, we will also recruit IT and administrative staff to assist the operations of the app. In the third stage, we will expand our scale of operations so that people all across China will be able to use the app. We will do some promotions using popular social media platforms, as well as partner with non-governmental organizations and schools to introduce the app to specific population groups. In our fourth and final stage, we will obtain feedback from our users using in-app ratings as well as surveys. With the feedback received, we will make some improvements and launch a new version of the app. And we hope that in the near future, our app can be expanded for use in other health issues. To achieve the objectives of our app, it is important for us to measure how it impacts individuals, both from a quantitative and a qualitative point of view. Quantitative impacts can be seen by the number of monthly active users, the number of app downloads, as well as the amount of fake news reported. As for qualitative impacts, they can be determined by uh, in-app surveys done by our users, interviews with university professors and student interns, as well as in-app health literacy tests to assess users' level of health knowledge. With these feedback obtained, we can improve our app to better suit the needs of users. We are living in a time where we have instant access to lots of pandemic-related information making it more important than ever to exercise critical judgment. With our app, we believe it will be easier for us to differentiate facts from myths so that together we can fight the virus.